Good morning everyone. I want to thank you for joining me this morning in our morning's devotion, Greater Portmore morning's devotion. I just want to welcome all of you who are here with me. Let's see 14 people and for those who will be joining later. So all of those who are from Greater Portmore, Spanish Town and Kingston Tabernacles, welcome, and to all the other tabern Tabernacle churches in the mission, welcome. And for those who are not affiliated to our Tabernacle churches, to the JEM, you know, but you have been here with us from last year, you know, you have joined us and, you know, you're, you're, you're our friends. 
you know, friend with the Greater Portman Tabernacle, Spanish Town, Kingston Tabernacle, and with the JEM. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I pray that this morning's devotion will be one that you know, will be beneficial to all of us. And we have just listened to DJ Nicholas' song, you know, Holy Ghost Gym. So I guess you might you, you, you might guess what I'll be sharing on. You know, if I am to give this a topic, I would call it um, exercise godliness. You know, DJ Nicholas was just singing about you know, if you're spiritually fat, you need to go to the Holy Ghost gym. But we're going to look um, in First Timothy chapter 4 and verses 7 and 8 and we'll read and, and, and look to what Paul said to Timothy in these few verses. So let me read First Timothy, First Timothy 4 verse 7 and 8 and it reads thus. But refuse profane or godless myths and old wives' fables or tales, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and of the life which is to come. Let us pray. Father, we, I just want to give you all the praise and glory because you truly deserve it. Lord, I want to thank you again, O oh God, for allowing me, for granting me this opportunity to share with your people. Lord, I pray that I'll not take it for granted, but truly I count it a privilege not to get this opportunity to share with your people. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that I'll really depend upon you. I depend on the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide me and to teach me and also to speak through me to those who are watching and that we'll be edified, we'll be blessed and that we live by your word. Lord, we pray for all those who are here that you continue to be with them, bless their family and for those who will be joining in sometime on the platform later, just pray, O God, that you'll really encourage us, you really speak to us and that you just bless us. We give you all the praise and glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Yes, as I said, thank you for joining us, uh, joining me. So, as I said, I'm sharing from verse Timothy 4, 7 to 8. But first Timothy, in first Timothy, Paul admonished Timothy, you know, in the context of Timothy being a young man and being in charge of the church in Ephesus, he was admonishing him, you know, in a nutshell, how to handle the affairs of the church, right? Also, what to teach the church people and also how, him, how he should behave, how he should live. Reading through, first, reading through first Timothy, you would realize that there was trouble brewing in the church in Ephesus. The people were turning away, diverting from the doctrine that was taught to them. There were, there, there were false doctrines being, being taught to the people. And so the people start to divert from that which they were, were, were taught. Listening to the false doctrine and not living and not living up to the right doctrine or the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were also engaged in godless myth, or as the as the King James put it, profane and also old wives fables they were also engaged in genealogies gossips they were discouraging people to get married they were discouraging marriages 
the people were abandoning their faith. And more of them were concerned about, about their outward appearance. They were concerned how they look physically. So how they would dress, the nice clothes that, that, that they would wear, and also how they, they, their physical body would look. So they would engage in exercise, make sure that they're exercising so that they'll be physically fit, you know, and that they look slim and trim. Excuse me, they will look physically fit, they will look well chiseled, you know. And also they would engage in, in abstaining from eating certain things. You know, because they wanted their body, they wanted their their, 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 their physical attribute, you know, to be one that is pleasant or pleasing, you know, to the eyes. So though these were some of the concerns that Paul wanted to address and how he wanted to encourage Timothy on how to deal with these things. So in verse 7, Paul said, I have nothing to do with the godless myth or profane. He was saying, I have nothing to do with these things, the godless myth and also the old wife fables. The people believe that they believe in incarnation, uh, in reincarnation. They believe in re reincarnation. They believe that a body, a living person, a, a living body, once that body dies, then that body will return in a different form, in a different body, at a different body. But as believers, as Christians, we do not believe in that, in that, that you will, when you die, then you come back as a dog, a cat, you know, an, a, a, a bird or something like that. No, that's not what we believe. We believe that when Christ returns, then this corruptible, this earthly body will put on incorruption. So we, we, we will put on a, 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 a heavenly, heavenly body. So those, those who are dead in Christ... Well, we'll be caught, um, and those who are alive will we'll we'll be caught up in the air with those who were dead in Christ and, and we'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye where we, we, we are discorruptible, we'll put on incorruption. So that's what we believe in. So we do not believe that, as Christians, we do not believe that you know, when we die, then our bodies, then we will return as something different. We will only return when Christ, we, we, whoever is dead in Christ, when Christ returns, they will rise. For those who, who, who are alive, then they will change in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye. Right? And this body will be changed to a heavenly body. That is what we believe. So I also a very common practice in, 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 in Jamaica uh, um, of godless myth and, and old wife fables is... A person will say that, you know, in order to protect their young baby, a newborn, whenever they put that child to lie down on a bed or in a crib, what they would do, they would open out the Bible to a psalm, you know, especially Psalm 23, and say that, and put it over the head of a child, at, at the head of a child while they're lying down, in order to stave off um, the, 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 the evil spirit, Duppy, Ghost. You know, that, that's, that's another, you know, all right fable and um, godless myth. And it, it is prevalent, it is common in Jamaica. There's another one which is common in Jamaica or so, but it, it, it is more to do with all right fables. You know, that a, a boy child, you know, when, if you, if, you, if you cut the hair of that boy child before he speaks, then is speaking we and will be retarded you know the the the, the time that you take to, to speak will be lengthened lengthen because his ear his ear was cut up so they say if you want that child if you want that boy child to speak early then you let that boy child hear hear grows you know so you will see you, you will see people plotting plotting the ear of the of, of the of the baby of the baby boys you know are cano in it because they want the child to speak <laughs> um early you know, so they will not trim, trim it. So those, those are some of the things we encounter here, you know, as old wife fables and, and godless myth. And it was also prevalent in the church in Ephesus. So 
Paul wanted to address this. You know, so he, 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 he told Timothy, this, stay away from, I have nothing to do with this. But what did he tell, what did he tell Timothy um, that he should engage in? He said, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So he was telling Timothy, forget about the godless myth and, and the old wife fables and living ungodly. What you need to do, you need to live godly. You need to make your light shine. So he said, you need, need to live a life that is pleasing to God and show others that that is all you must live. So how does, how does someone exercise godliness? How does someone exercise godliness? According to 1 Timothy 4, we will see what Paul says that, how Paul says that uh, we're supposed to exercise godliness. First and foremost, what we must do it is to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. We have to give our life to God. We have to give our life to God. If you say that you're behaving godly, you're living godly, and you do not, do not have God in your life, you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, then you're just being ritualistic. You're just being legalistic. It is as if, you, uh, 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 as, as one, uh, one of my dear friends would say, you have the art, which is the a, which is the a r t, right, of godliness, of knowing what to do, you know, knowing what to say, but you do not have the heart, h e a r t, of God. That is what you will be doing in essence when you say you are living godly, but you do not know Christ as Lord and say you have not, not accepted Christ. As Paul, as Paul said in in Second Timothy three verse five, he says that having a form of godliness, but denying but denying the power thereof. That is a no-no. We can't be, we can't be exercising godliness or showing that, yeah, man, yeah man, I know what to say, I know what to do, but yet still, I do not have the power of God in me. To be living godly, then you need the power of God in you, within you, within us, so that we can exude godliness. So after you have done that, after, after we have accepted, have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, then know, right? we can show how we will live God, godly. So, Paul continues, and he, he says to, to, Timothy, uh, to Timothy, be an example for the believers in word. So, in whatever you say. So, you speak to people, you speak to people gently. You know, you speak to people lovingly and kindly. You don't, you, 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 you don't bash people. You don't go around and gossip and things. You say good things about people. You, you, you try to build the life of people, right? So it says, in word, be an example to the, um, for the believers, in word, in conversation, and when the King James speak up, um, speaks about conversation, it's talking about life, you know, our life, how we live our lives, right? So we need to be, we, we, we need to live our lives for God. We need to, we need to be living as the scripture instructs, as it's, the scripture instructs us. That is how we should be living. Also, we must be, uh, Paul, Paul told him that he must be an example in charity and that is speaking about love so we need to show love Paul, he was saying show love for each other so that is what we are, we are we, we're supposed to do be loving to each other and if we say we love each other then we will not be gossiping we will not be hurting each other we will not hurt each other we will not bash down we will not bash each other you know we, we seek to, to even if we are correcting each other then we'll do it in love we'll do it in a, in a way that you know seek to restore the person um to the faith also Paul said you need to be an example to the believer in faith so you need to show that i'm living for god i believe in jesus christ as Lord and savior and i'm living that way as a person who is saved i know that i am redeemed now and when christ returns i will be redeemed and also in purity so I must live a life that is pleasing to God, a, 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 a life that is, that, that is free from sin. Uh, as as we, I would say, uh, when, once we are alive, then we will engage in sin. But we need to be, we need to sin less. And we, we're not supposed to be practicing sin. Right? So, impurity, that, that's, a, that's another thing. Be 
an example to believer in purity. And Paul continues. He says you must devote yourself to the reading of the scripture, public reading of the scripture, preaching and teaching. That's what he, he, he was instructing and admonished Timothy to do. You need to be in the word, in the word of God, reading the word of God, preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. And you may say that I'm not a preacher, I'm not a teacher. But all of us has the opportunity to share with someone that Jesus Christ loves them. Say to a person, Jesus Christ loves you, he died for you, and you can accept him as Lord and Savior. Simply that. You don't have to be any big preacher or teacher. Right? Just, just like how I am not a, any preacher or any big teacher. So that we must devote ourselves to reading the scripture, preaching and teaching. That's what Paul told Timothy. And he said also, do not neglect your gift. The gift, the God-given gift that we have, we must use it to build up others, to encourage others, right? to glorify God. Use our gifts for the benefit of all, to glorify God. So we must not be using it selfishly, just using it for ourselves. We're using it to benefit the believer, benefit those who are around us. And finally, he says, the doctrine, the word of God, how God says we must live, how God says you must live, then it must match up, it must be the same as the doctrine. Whatever the word of God is saying, then our lives must match up with that. Whatever the doctrine is saying, our lives must match up with that. Whatever we are saying, then what we are doing must match. They can't be one up and one down. They must match. So that is how we exercise based on 1 Timothy 4. That is how we exercise our godliness, living godly. Right? So in verse 8, Paul um, uh, makes a comparison, was making a comparison between bodily exercise and exercising godliness. Because as I, as, I, as I said earlier, the people, they were interested in how they look. You know, they were exercising, getting physically fit. You know, they were, they, they, were, they, 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 were, they were interested in how they look physically, you know, and wanted to, to, to have a great body and wear pretty clothes and so. But not much of living for God. So I want to look at a few comparisons based on what verse 8 says. So the comparison between the bodily exercise, right, our physical exercise, and exercising godliness. The bodily exercise benefits benefit just a little, while exercising godliness benefit give, is, a, is a benefit a whole lot. It's a great benefit, right? When you when you when you compare both of them. Secondly. Bodily exercise is just physical, it's temporal, it's only for this life. But, but exercising godliness is for, is spiritual, it's for both this life and for the next, it's everlasting. You know, our health and well, um, wellness ministry, Ministry of Health and Wellness, you know, they are promoting um health and wellness eh? so they, they're promoting that we need to get up in in, in the in the mornings or in the afternoon and you know at least and exercise for at least half an hour and to eat right of course that is good you know it's very good that you that you'd want to exercise so you can get your, your blood pumping you know um your your your, your cardiovascular going you know and to, to to save off um diabetes and and those uncommunicable diseases yes so yeah, that's it. Eat right and exercise. You know, that's a way for healthy living. But that is only temporal. That benefit, that benefit, yeah, it benefits you know, because yes, yeah, when you exercise, you feel good. You know, your body, your body looks good. You look sturdy. You look ruddy. You know, and you look well chiseled. If you if you look at the athletes, if you look at the the, the movie stars, you know, those people they are in the gym. When you look, yeah, man, their body look well. Them look they look quite well but it's only for this moment it's not lasting 
it's temporal it's only physical the 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 the, the as the, the scripture says uh second corinthians 4 16 b it says that but though our outward man perisheth so our out, outward man perishes so no matter how we might be exercising and 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 and, and feeding our body properly yes it is good but our bodies still perish it still deteriorates and we can see it, it those, with, with those who use so um, who were involved in sports, sporting activity, those who, the actors and so, we used to, used to look well when they were young, and now you see that they're just wasting away. When you look at them, some of them, some of them are even doing surgery, we, we call it where they cut themselves and, and, and do, um, tummy tuck and those things. But yes, we are all wasting away, no matter how we feed our body and exercise, because it's, it's only physical, it's temporary, it's only for now. But what? The exercising godliness is spiritual it is everlasting it is for this life and also for the next it's not just just for now it's for our lives it's for everything it, 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 once you once once we exercise our godliness then we are dealing with the spirit man and the scripture says the, the, the last part of of second corinthians 4 16 it says that what the inward man is renewed day by day the inward man is renewed day by day so our our our, our inward man is is being renewed when we get into the word of god when we present our bodies as living sacrifice getting into word confessing our sins and living for god then our inward man, our spiritual being, is, is renewed day by day, while our outward man is deteriorating, perishing. It's only temporal. And thirdly, bodily exercise benefits only the person who is engaged in the exercise. So it's only self gratifying. So you're exercising, yeah, it only benefits. If I'm exercising, it only benefits me if you're exercising it only benefits you it does not benefit anyone else so yes you, you look good and you feel good and then you, 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 you're physically fit and so it's only benefiting you but but exercising godliness benefit both the person who the godly who the the who the godly exercise is being directed towards right so that person would experience your love, that person would experience your kindness, that person would experience, you know, your kindness, or, or, or you treat them, speaking to them um, gentle, gently, and, and your favor, that person will benefit, will benefit from that, you know, because you, are, because you are directing your godliness towards them, so you treat them lovingly, you share with them, you are gentle with them, and one, that, that person benefits, and that, that will also lead a person to accept Christ, which is where we where we want to go, accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. So I benefit those who the god who the godly exercise is directed towards. I also benefit do um those who are carrying out the godly exercise. So if you are carrying out the godly exercise, if I'm carrying out the godly exercise, it benefit me to benefit you also. Oh. We'll be storing up treasures in heaven. We will be storing up treasures in heaven. So we see that it benefit benefits both those who it's directed towards and those who are doing the exercise. So let us not be just thinking about our outward appearance. Let us not be thinking about our physical appearance and, and, and wanting wanting to, to look good exercising going to the gym and, and 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 doing all of that what we need to do is to exercise godliness we need to live godly let us each seek to live godly but first in order to live godly we need to accept christ alone and Savior. we need to have god in our lives we can't exercise godliness and we do not have the power of god in our lives god bless you let, let me pray. 
Father, thank you, oh God, for sharing your, sharing your word with us, dear Father. Lord, you have just spoken to us, oh God, reminding us that we need to exercise godliness. That is what matters. Exercising godliness is everlasting. It is for this life and for the next. It's spiritual. It is good. That is where you want us to go. So we can share with each other. We can love each other. So others will benefit from our lives. And we will also benefit. So it's not just about looking good. Wearing good clothes. And looking good physically. No. It's much more than that. So Lord, I pray, O oh God, that as we have heard your word, that we will put your word into practice. Your word is indeed a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. I pray that we live by your word, O oh God. Bless each and every one of us who are here, who is here, and who have heard your word. And for those who will be coming on later, Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. I pray in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. So next week, Monday, we will continue with our morning's devotion and join us tomorrow, 10 o'clock, for Greater Portmore streaming or Sunday service and also Kingston Tab and Spanish Town. No, Spanish Town, not Kingston Tab. Uh, Spanish Town Tabernacle will be streaming at 11. So join us online on this platform, on this platform and be blessed and see you on Monday. God bless you.